Hello and welcome to this Siebel Migration Application Demo. So in this demonstration, we're going to do a full runtime repository migration in synchronous mode. So we'll start with creating a migration plan, giving it name and description. And since it's synchronous, we're going to use our dev and prod connections as source and target respectively. And we select the runtime repository data service. So that's the full version. So you can select any main or integration workspace branch or version, and that will be exported. Uh, it forces the schema service and application workspace data service, AKA list of values. You cannot unselect them. And let's save that migration plan. And, and execute it. So in the execution page, we click the run button. and click OK to confirm the message. And since this will be working against the target database, we need to provide the schema owner password for the target database. Clicking OK will run the execution proper and we can see that there are a lot of steps ahead. So first is the schema service, which exports the logical schema to a file. It's currently running. Uh, the same is true for the repository export. So that's running too. So there's some degree of parallelism that can be observed. And of course you can use the lock button to retrieve the log files and see what's going on and also monitor your systems. So here in the source system, the DDL dict and repim exp executables are running. So the schema for the, the log file for the schema service uh, shows that DDL dict is running against the Siebel repository and putting the output in the file system migration folder. And you can see it's going ahead and reading the physical schema and writing that to a file. And that file will be used to synchronize the schema on the target later on. So refreshing regularly can help you understand what's finished. So the uh, schema service has finished, but the repository export's still ongoing. Let's have a look. So good old RepimX, but uh, with a bit of a twist uh, as it defines the workspace name and version and languages to export. It exports uh, Siebel repository, of course, and it only exports the runtime repository data, so not the design repository data. This will also take a while, so be patient while this continues. And we have been speeding up this video, of course, so not to bother you with waiting. So here the repository export has finished in about 10 minutes, so that's not bad. And we see that the package has been delivered and it's now unpackaged on the target. Schema service is running on the target at this moment, applying the schema changes. And again, you can monitor the target environment and also Take a look at the migration package location where you should find the zip file that has been produced by the export and 
has been picked up by the import. So in case you're interested, just take a look. Don't modify anything. So here you will find all the dat files and schema files, etc. So this package has been unpacked and is now applied to the target. So schema server is still running. Notice that it's running against the production database. Now schema service has finished and now the repository will be imported. Very important to understand that the repository imported will be called migrated repository. In a full migration, you will always get a new repository, a second one, and you later need to rename that. So we're going to show that. And this repository will contain only the runtime and mandatory design repository data, not the design repository data. Uh, next up is the DB check, which uh, verifies the schema. Make sure it verifies against the migrated repository. And this should also take care of the dictionary cache on the target system. The final steps in this uh, full migration is the appliance of the list of values. So this is already finished, so you have to go to the history to check for uh, log files, etc. So here's the final step, importing the list of values, which actually has a series of exporting it and importing it again. So now let's verify against the production database. The uh, S repository table has now two entries, the new migrated repository and the old Siebel repository. And you would find that when you query for a count of list of values, that they have essentially doubled. So this is normal and we need to rename repositories and clean up and then this will be uh, a normal number again. So here we are now taking care of renaming those repositories. So first update the Siebel repository to old Siebel repository and now rename the migrated repository to Siebel repository. So this of course has to be done with the enterprise being shut down. So now just Confirm, we now have an old Siebel repository which has to be removed and a Siebel repository which has to stay. So now let's uh, clean up. So we are moving to the uh, Siebel server bin directory and launch RR cleanup. Just straight launch to see the parameters. And now we can construct our command line using, of course, the old Siebel repository to be removed. Don't make that mistake. And while it's running, it's running for uh, several minutes to delete all these records. Uh, we can verify counts on, for example, the RR tables like SRR applet, or uh, specifically the list of values. And while it's still running, you would see that high number of list of values. And once it's finished, this number should half, essentially. So let's verify later again. And indeed, now there's only one repository left after the utility has stopped running. So the number of list of values is now again down to normal. And we can verify that there's only the Siebel repository present. Now we need to run RR cleanup a second time, appending minus A yes to remove any orphan records that might exist. So this typically runs very fast and shouldn't be forgotten. And 
And now we can start the enterprise. And once started up, we can log into the application to actually run the final step to activate tasks. So as Bookshelf tells us, we have to run the Siebel Runtime Metadata Publisher service with the activate tasks method. And we have to pass in a property full migration to true. So this is a mandatory step after full migration. It has to be done manually. Of course, you don't have to use the business service simulator. You can use any means of invoking that business service, including REST API. And to verify um, that it actually has done its job, you can go to the publish tasks or task deployment view. And while it's running, you still see tasks in the upper list applet. These are completed in the repository. And once it's finished running, those in the upper list applet go away and you only have active records in the database. The same is applicable to workflow processes if you are on 20.6 or earlier. As of 27 and higher, workflow processes are delivered with the runtime repository, so no, app, no activation required there. Thank you for learning Siebel with the Siebel Hub. We have a unique, comprehensive and always up-to-date collection of Siebel CRM 2021 training classes. We can deliver live online and on-site training in the highest quality with the most experienced instructors. And we also offer a unique modular Siebel CRM 20 and 21 training. Follow the links in the description or on this slide to learn more and learn Siebel with the Siebel app.